Hi, uh, everybody. Um, I wish I had an afro. Um, <laughs> it's getting thinner and thinner. Uh, my name is Christian Boer. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I have dyslexia. Um, I'm standing here also as a six-year-old student, um, hearing that he has dyslexia, um, knowing that it's something to do with reading, but doesn't know anything more. And also, um, the teacher didn't know anything more than it's about reading. Um, so I'm standing here also to give those children in, in your classes um, a bit of voice so that you understand a bit about dyslexia itself. Um, so when you understand dyslexia, you can also understand the idea and the concept behind the typeface itself. Uh, Oh, yeah. So I will show you how my um, elementary school and later middle school, uh, until I went to the graphic school and art school after that, um, my school was, I'm sitting here in the desk and um, I keep drawing, um, drawing anything. Uh, what I, I liked it was my image, my language in my head. Um, and also I could sit, sit still and focus and keep my mind clear and really, really listen. Um, but for the teachers, it was also, the year was beginning, everyone was paying attention, except Chris was drawing. So they always asked me, put your drawings away, it's not respectful, please focus on me. And within 10, 20 minutes, they were like, okay, sit still, please. You're distracting other students. Keep your drawing back and keep drawing and they will see my grades going up again. Um, so for the outside world, it was a different perspective than for me. Um, but it was helping me to, to cope with my disabilities. And, and the strange thing was that, that in all those years, teachers never asked me what I need. They sent me to a remedial teacher, they, they tried to help me, but they never asked me what I need or what I want. So um, in, in, in conference with this, maybe you can do a collab with your students with an accessibility and ask them, and if they don't know it, um, get the ideas spreading and, and, and from one student to the other student. Um, it, it will help, it will help. So what I get, uh, I got a lot of questions from people that said, oh, you have dyslexia. How it is to have dyslexia? How it is to read with dyslexia? And I asked the same question back, how it is to read without dyslexia? <laughs> and then they, yeah, I just read. And, and, and I, I, I have an example for that, our, our brain is, just differently wired. So if you look at this and you think the lower part is lighter, think again, it's, it's an optical illusion. But your brain is wired this way. So when I go back, you see it again. And this is why people with dyslexia make the same mistakes over and over. So a lot of teachers are rolling their eyes, don't you see it? I uh, just explain it. Why don't you do it wrong again? It's just because our brain is differently wired. So in 2011, uh, 12, they did some research about uh, people in an MRI scanner, um, and they start reading, and um, they see three areas that were uh, lighting up. The brain is never built to start reading. We, we cope to read and some areas, the uh, Broca area is, um, was designed to see and to recognize objects and uh, faces. And now it is um, transformed to also read. With dyslexics, the other regions are not active at all. And the vision area, the Broca, is, is highly active. So we try to see the characters and, 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 and try to make an image and understand and put sound to it. Um, and, and this will take five times more energy for people with dyslexia to read. Just if you want to, 
Just try one day, read everything five times. Your Facebook, your email, your books, um, your packaging, everything. And if you can manage it one day, <laughs> you, you will never ask it, uh, people with dyslexia to try harder because they just want to be normal. They, they are already trying. They know that there is something wrong. So how does it start? In 2008, I was always a bit running for my dyslexia, hiding my dyslexia. I never told my teachers that I have dyslexia. I just want to be normal. Um, until I write something down, I put it on the desk, and before I went back to my own desk, they told me, Chris, are you ever tested on dyslexia? Yeah, I know, okay, sorry. So, um, and they told me always, you're switching and rotating the letters up and, and, and you're hustling everything, uh, but I did not see it, like the optical illusion. So, when in 2008 I started with my graduation project and I was thinking I will not run again from my dyslexia. Let's focus on this. And I was looking at text layouts, color of the letters and anything. And then I, I started reading the switching and rotating and mirroring the letters. And I heard it all my life, but this was the first time that I just read it. And what I did, I, I, I made it a movie of it in my head. Um, I, I noticed that those are all 3D movements. So when you take a cup of coffee, I never have a problem. I'm very really good in, in turning things in my head and it's, it's, it's good when you're a graphic designer or an architect. But when you do this in your head with text and you, you only have to change one letter uh, to make a reading error, so you go back and forward again to read what I did just read. So this is the first time that I was conscious of what I was doing while I was reading. So I was thinking, okay, if we can change this by designing it in a different way, um, then other typefaces, this is Helvetica, it's the most used typeface in the world. And if you switch and rotate the letters, you see these are all twin letters for people with dyslexia. These are, it's not only about the sound, it's, it's, it's also about how they make a typeface. They try to make it so uniform as possible. Um, for, to inform my teachers that, that these were holy rules that I cannot touch, but I said if the rules are above the function of a typeface, getting the message across, then the rules are not holy anymore. So I throw all the rules away and make my own set of rules to help people with dyslexia. So by making the underside bolder, you cannot flip them upside down anymore. It's, it's quite easy. And by just opening the letters a bit more, it's, it's easier to recognize. They are now big on screen. They are small in your books. So everything, every millimeter in, in the design is, is optimized to recognize each letter. And what I have done is also, I've looked at how people learn to write. A lot of dyslexic learn to handwrite letters and, and, and with the letters attached to each other, they hold on to that um, because there is movement in that letter. And second, there's also easier to disguise errors. There's, there's something else. <laughs> um, so I use that movement to make difference between the letters. So I slanted the J and not the I. So you don't read II or JJ anymore. And that movement I have also used to make twin letters like the B and the D when you mirror them and change them so you, they don't fit anymore. And making the D center and A center longer. So the H is not an N anymore. It's, it's, you read so many letters um, as possible. So 
It's, it's all processing in the brain. And this is one thing. Not every dyslectic have the same problems. Some have different trick letters than others. Um, I have always uh, problems with capital letters. Um, I'm busy with reading. The first sentence is not really a problem. The second, but when you get really in the, to the text, you're missing in capital letters. You're trying to make it visible for you to understand what you are reading. And when you miss a capital letter, um, you put those sentences together while you're still busy in your head. It's confusing. Some people get dizzy of it. So just by making the capital letters bolder, you kind of create a stop sign within the text itself. So you know to have a break and go to the next line. Spacing, not only between the letters, but also uh, between the words. Um, especially when you have long words, um, they, they tend to get to melt together in a kind of crowding effect. Um, so what I did it was look at, at the spacing uh, between the letters to optimize them so when you, you have a long word, they don't melt to each other. Um, so I graduated with it. Uh, the teachers were not all happy about it uh, because they did not understand it completely. Um, my head teacher was a graphic designer and also dyslectic, so after each class he came back to me and said, just keep on going with this. And my test group was also like, yeah, uh, and, and can you install it? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm still busy, it's not yet a typeface. So um, that was, was always a bit strange that when I graduated, he said, keep me in the loop loophole what's happening with the typeface. So um, they did a couple of research. This is one of the latest research uh, with an eye tracker. An eye tracker is uh, an infrared beam that's sensing your eye, so that follows your um, movement over the text. Um, it's highly accurate. Um, and they, they see a pattern of people with dyslexia that they go back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, over and over, um, and crisscrossing over the text almost uh, to understand what they uh, read. Um, and they did it also uh, with uh, the dyslexia font. And um, they see a more regular pattern in uh, how they read. Um, and, and even they came up with the end conclusion that even the pupils of the eyes were bigger because they use less brain power to uh, read and understand what they were reading. So they could more, see more letters at once. Um, you have seen the time. Um, the time is not important. Uh, it's faster, but it's not important. It is much, much more important to understand what you just read. You, if you want, you can ask uh, people with dyslexia in your class, a uh, student, stand up and read a part, a page of a book, and when they are ready, just ask them what you just have read, and they will not know, because there's a little bit stress. They will read up aloud, they will make the sounds, but they will not transform into image to understand what they just have read. So. Then I get a lot of, yeah, you're not all graphic designers. <laughs> um, I get a lot of questions, what can you do with a typeface? Um, a lot of emails, so I hope that I don't get emails from you. What is a typeface? <laughs> uh, it's like any other typeface on your computer. Just use it um, like any other com typeface on your computer. Um, and, and, and type and, and, and read sting, things online. Um, um, that's my own favorite. Just install your uh, browser to, to display any, any website into the dyslexia font. And we heard from a lot of schools around the world that they have problems with PDFs and, and, and kind of uh, presets in, in their programs. So we did a Kickstarter. Um, and that's done. We are now building uh, this. Uh, it's an online PDF converter, so all the schools uh, uh, 
that are already using, uh, and also the home users and, and, and companies, uh, will get this uh, also to their uh, system so they can uh, convert any text into uh, the dyslexia font. So it was never intended to uh, go worldwide. I, um, <laughs> uh, I always thought I was the only one in the world with dyslexia and a couple of other guys. Um, <laughs> I made a mistake, <laughs> uh, so it went globally, uh, and we help uh, each year um, uh, around 80 to 100,000 people uh, with uh, dyslexia, from schools to uh, companies to home users that are on my own favorite. And um, yeah, we help each year, each year more people. Um, and we have make no commercials, so this by the power of people with dyslexia telling each other. Thank you. <laughs>